Previously, we have used Java classes such as the string class and the system class. Both of these classes are predefined in the java.lang package provided to us within the Java SE API. In other words, we do not have to define any methods related to the classes we have used in order to use the method. While the libraries of classes provided to us within the Java SE API are useful, creating custom classes is often necessary. In fact, this is the importance and focus of object-oriented programming. Java and other OOP languages allow for reusable code, in turn increasing efficiency. A Java class is composed of attributes, which are assigned by variables, and operations, which are termed methods in the Java programming language. Together, the attributes and operations are called the members of a class. Some examples of a class and its corresponding attributes could be seen here. Notice all the classes have similar set operations. That is because this is a very common method often included within a class to set the value of an attribute belonging to that class. We will cover more on why we need a method to set a class variable in an upcoming video, but for now, just know we need a method in order to change the value of a class attribute, and that is why set methods are so common and why you see them used so often here. Similarly, the get method is commonly used within a class in order to retrieve the values of the class's attributes. Looking at the temperature class, we can see that there are two operations other than the set operations. These are examples of other operations you might include within a class to perform an operation on the value stored within the object created by the class. We will cover the temperature class in this example. Let's create a new project called weather, and in this project we will add a class called temperature. Notice we will not be clicking the box to include the main method stub. That is because this class will not be used as an entry point for the Java program we are creating. We will create the entry point to interact with this temperature class later. We are going to declare two private variables of the int data type. They will be called tempf and tempc, referencing to a Fahrenheit temperature and a Celsius temperature. We will cover the difference between private, public, and protected modifiers in another video. For now, know that generally, variables are private and methods are public. Next, we will create our first method of type void, meaning it will not return a value, and we will call it setf. In parentheses, we set the parameters of this method. Parameters are the input values necessary to utilize the method. In this example, when we are going to set the temperature, we need to provide a value as input. It will be an integer value, and in this case, we will call it new tempf. Now, within our braces, we can define the operation to be performed when this method is called. Here, we will be assigning the value provided within the parentheses when the method is called new tempf to the object variable tempf. And after that, we will output the new value our Fahrenheit temperature has been set to to the console. Next, we will create a very similar method to set the object's Celsius variable value. We can do this by copying the previous method and changing all capital F's to capital C's. Now that we have our set methods created, we can create the methods to convert Celsius to Fahrenheit and Fahrenheit to Celsius. First, we will create a method to convert Celsius to Fahrenheit. We will call it convert C to F and it will also be of type void. This method will not require any parameters. Inside of this method, we will use the value stored in the object's tempc variable to calculate the corresponding Fahrenheit value. After this operation is performed, we can output the Celsius to Fahrenheit conversion to the console. Next, we will create a method to convert Fahrenheit to Celsius. This method will be very similar to the previous one, noting the key differences in the conversion calculation. These are the four methods we previously seen in the temperature class listed on our class examples. We are going to add two more methods to this class because they are often included in class definitions. The first method we are going to create is going to be named the same thing as our class and it will not include a return type. 
This is a special kind of method called a constructor. This method is called whenever an object is instantiated. If you remember creating objects before, we use the new keyword when creating or instantiating a new object. It is at this moment that the class constructor is called. The constructor essentially initializes the newly created object as defined within the constructor. In our constructor, we will simply initialize our object variables to zero. The last method we are going to create in our temperature class is the toString method. This method returns a string representation of the object. We will see this in action in a bit. For now, we will define this method by having a string return type as it returns a string. And we will set what string we want to be returned simply by using a return statement and then our string to be output to the console. Okay, now the temperature class is done. Now we'll create a new class within our project to interact with our new temperature class. We will call this class weatherman, and we will click to include the main method stub as this will be our entry point for our program. Now inside the main method, we will instantiate a temperature object by typing the name of the class we just created, temperature, the name we want to assign to the object we are about to instantiate, in this case we will call it thermometer, followed by an equal sign, the keyword new, and lastly, the name of the class followed by opening and closing parentheses. Notice how this is actually the constructor being called. Let's go ahead and using a print line statement, see what is printed out to the console if we put our object's name within the parentheses. As you can see, the toString method we created is called. If we go back into the temperature class and remove the toString method, then rerun our program, you can see what value is set to be printed by default. We'll go ahead and add the toString method back in, and we will go ahead and use the setC method to set a value to our object's Celsius variable. We will do this by typing our object's name, thermometer, followed by a dot and the name of the method we want to call, in this case, setC, followed by parentheses and the value we want to assign to our temperature object's C variable. Here it will be 100. If we run our program, now we can see our setC method has output some information to the console. This is the information we define the method to output. We will go ahead and use the same technique to set our Fahrenheit variable to 120. Next, we will try out our conversion methods. Both methods are called similarly to our set methods, except notice these do not require any parameters. If we run our program, we can see we have our conversions output to the console. And if we want to verify our calculations are being performed correctly, we can. If we input 120 here, we see we get 48.9 on the Celsius side. Our program gave us 48. Notice the 10th digit is missing. This is because we used an integer data type for our object variables. We could have used a double or float data type to see a more accurate result. And if we go ahead and input our Celsius variable value of 100 over here, you can see we get 212 on the Fahrenheit side, which is exactly what our program output.